when you stop and consider the nine races that we've seen so far, we've seen four different Armour All pole sitters, four different race winners, and nine different drivers on the podium out of a typical total field of 24. Yeah, it looks like it's really struggled for grip on this lap. It's been unhooked, meaning it hasn't been able to get it to the corner with the front grip, and then it's been disconnected with rear oversteer, and he will, will be oh, dissatisfied. Probably not a scrappy lap there. Uh, well, it looks a bit harder for you, mate. What's it looking like in the mid sector? Just a little quicker than Cam Waters. Nice gear change then, that was beautifully done. From third to fourth, he pulled the gear early, didn't have any wheel spin, and he goes job, to the P1 top of the 31.58. Uh, Max, you'll save on the way in, please. Brock's on the move next year to Matt Stone Racing. We'll see what this lap looks like for him. It's not going to be very far away from either Waters or LeBrock. He's there or thereabouts. Certainly tricky conditions at the moment as he gets to the control line, P2. Uh, currently P2 at that time, currently P2. Run down the front straight now as we try and determine the starting order now for our top 10 positions for race number 29. Scott Pye drops in with a 1 minute 32.1. He yeah, lost a bit up. of ground there in the third sector. This is very, very close. Hazelwood with a 31.58. Percat with a 31.76. So another cool. spot for Todd Hazelwood. And he's driven to the conditions perfectly. Little slide there on the way into the final corner. It just got loose at the rear. He gathered it up now oh, and a big slide at the end of the corner. That will have actually cost him a little bit of time, but this is going to be pretty good. He's on target here to be able to put a peak number up that might knock off Hazelwood, and he has by two tenths of a second. And I reckon there was a tiny bit of cloud cover. He's done a faster split than anyone else, so the thing was well wide out there, but it actually must have given him a half a yield. Well, it was really good before it got to there. Yeah. So I think that mistake is probably still two or three tenths of a second but in the rest of the, the, the sector was absolutely on fire. And he goes to the top of the 31.26, so great nice recovery, work, Davison. Great recovery. Second time Ingrid Immediate comes up. Very and good. And the cumulative is better than anybody else so far. So Wincup on target for a provisional pole at the moment. Closest to camera bottom right, where's McDougall Engineer? And the Shell V Power Racing Team top right just watching to see whether or not Will's time will stand up here. Out of the final corner, look pretty tidy. So Win Cup now, it's just a case of focusing on smooth shifting. He's chasing a 131.2 and he betters it by great a big chunk. Great job. That's uh, quickest by six cents so far. So let's see what the other guys do. Awesome run. He just bobbled slightly across the curb into turn 10, but he's been very good and cagey with the way in which he uses that concrete apron up there. Does that help in the third and final sector for Van Gisbergen? Studies those shift lights to perfection as he gets down towards the control line. The target is a 30.6. He doesn't okay, achieve mate. it. Get off there. P3, Tony P3. So uh, Jamie, Davo, and then yourself. Not a millimetre to spare on the exit of Corporate Hill and still makes that apex in the middle of the corner. Here's our second reference. He lights it up in second gear, coming out the other side of it. And it is oh, the best nothing. that we've seen so far. There is nothing in it. This is going to be a pressure a moment. How tidy is he through the last two corners? Wincup on provisional pole. Anton Di Pasquale threatening and he has been supreme in the recent past. He lines it up, uses the concrete apron and he took a pole one, two and three times the first weekend, the second weekend and twice last weekend and he's done it again right now. So close. Thank you. Great job. You won. P1 it is, but a much tighter margin than we saw earlier, Mark. 1 okay. minute 30.4. Will Davison in the background there. Closest to camera is Ludo Lacroix. So 0.21 of a second, the gap in the end. And the fastest sectors that we've seen in both two and three from Anton on screen. And Jamie was the fastest in sector one. This, when we took that shot, that was more lively than we've seen Anton down there in the recent past, because I reckon he's bombed in there with the same level of commitment of, as we've seen earlier today and in recent weeks. And suddenly there's a disconnect. Whoa, hang on, the grip's not quite there. So he had to shuffle it, and he came out the other side nicely. So awesome job. And you were so animated. You just, wow, how's all the steering movements and, and corrections going on? So it was a very nice drive. Well, if there's a place where you're going to bowl a wide, that's not the place. Uh, it is. It's so fast, isn't it? And that's 1.2 seconds slower than the timing qualifying. So that, again, indicates how slippery it is out there.
checking those results for you of the Armoral shootout and Anton Di Pasquale, yet another pole. What a superb performance. He's so connected with this racetrack at the moment. Moves his career pole tally on to 11.